for over 12 hours since the moment I woke up and I have the craziest migraine right now and I feel like throwing up <sighs> it's probably from staring at the screen all day long but holy shit hi guys welcome back to my channel today I'm sharing another day in my life as an investment banker video but I want to talk more about my work-life balance and how I try to maintain a personal life outside of this job. So I woke up with the biggest headache today, I think. So I'm working, so I'm just gonna take a shower. But can I drink coffee after I take a towel? As you all know, investment banking is known for its crazy hours, intense demands, high pressure. That's why it's so important to learn how to draw that line between work and personal life. Otherwise, you will feel so burnt out so fast. Finding that balance between work and personal life can be really challenging, especially if you're just starting out in banking or you're a first year analyst. So today, I want to walk you through a typical day for me at the office, but also share some tips and advice on how I try to carve out quality time for myself and my friends. The foundation of my work-life balance starts with time management and prioritization. Here, you can see me jotting down my agenda for the day, listing my tasks, meetings, and deadlines. I like to do this every single morning to just make sure that I stay on top of my schedule and allocate the right time for each project that I'm assigned on. Sometimes I'll find that projects have the same deadline and I need to know how to prioritize one over the other and maybe negotiate to extend the deadline for another project. It's important to communicate these type of things with people on your team so that you're not left pulling 3-4 a.m. nights every single night. But of course, with the nature of this job, you will be placed on live deals where materials are time sensitive and deadlines cannot be pushed. So I always make sure to prioritize the live stuff first before I work on other materials. Working so many hours is definitely not healthy. So I try to take a mental health walk or a mental break whenever I could. I see so many comments coming at me for complaining about sitting in front of a desk for 12 hours because it doesn't seem that hard. And I admit, Banking is not as physically strenuous as some other jobs, but it does place a significant demand on your mental well-being and overworking and overstressing can take a toll on your health and overall quality of life. That's why I'm always a strong advocate for taking care of your mental health. It doesn't show a sign of weakness if you ask to take a break at work. Another key aspect of maintaining my work-life balance in investment banking is reflection. I like to sit down with my colleagues and close friends at work over a coffee chat and just talk about our experiences and ask them for advice. Honestly, I have my go-to colleagues who are basically my therapists. The analysts and associates who are only two to three years older than me have gone through the same things that I'm going through right now and the thoughts that I have, the burnout that I feel, they feel all of that. So I like to go to them to ask for advice and just reassess my motivation. This is going to sound really cheesy, but it's important to remind ourselves why we choose this career path and what goals we're striving for and having a clear sense of purpose and personal goal makes it easier to justify the long hours that we're working. This job has a way of making you truly appreciate time and relationship because it's so rare for a banker to have that in the early years of your career. Making time for your friends and time for your hobbies is a challenge in investment banking, but it is a must. Sometimes I have to push myself to take a break or when there's a rare moment of downtime, I make sure to utilize it wisely. On this particular day, I wrapped things up around 7 p.m. in office and I knew I had a brief window before more comments and more work was gonna come across, so I hit up my friend and we went to the picnic to catch the sunset. 
A lot of the times when my friends ask me to do something or they try to plan something in advance, I can't do it because I don't know what my schedule looks like. And as a first year investment banker, you shouldn't really make plans, especially during the weekdays. So everything I do tends to be more spontaneous and I'm very grateful that my friends have the time to cater to my schedules. It's really important to maintain a close relationship with your friends outside of work and it's going to be hard because as a first year, second year analyst, you're probably going to spend 80 to 90% of your time at work at the office. As we grow older and our lives get busier, it's easier to let those friendships slip, but it's so important to keep these relationships because hanging out with friends is a way of escape from the pressure of our jobs. And my friends outside of banking provide me a sense of normalcy and reminder that life extends beyond just being in office and crunching numbers all the time. So make sure to make the effort to reach out and plan those brunches, celebrate the birthdays, and go on vacations with your friends. At the end of the day, your friends and your family are your anchors and in this world of cutthroat finance, you need something to keep you sane. I do want to acknowledge though that as a first year investment banker, a ch- banking remember if you ever feel overwhelmed or stressed you're not alone it's so easy to feel the imposter syndrome in this industry and feel like no one else is going through it and everyone has their shit together but that's not true like trust me everyone is going through it and everyone is stressed some people are just better at hiding it if you have any questions about this job or just tips and advice on how to navigate feel free to leave a comment reach out to me i'll try to help um thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video bye